Well, if I could, uh, if I could get started and and I could say uh, today, in many, many ways, is a a great day, a great day for the state of West Virginia, something that we've never done before. We're embarking on boldness and things that have never been done. Today will be the start of us launching ourselves into creating real jobs and real opportunity. And our arteries within our state that are going to be able to bring people and tourism and manufacturing and on and on to our state. Now today is the day that I'm getting to sign some things, which is kind of nice too. And the other thing is we're going today to announce the date of our election. It's going to be on October the 7th, on a Saturday that Marshall plays in the evening and WVU plays away, I guess, on that day. So we want everybody to come out and vote. Now, everybody needs to understand that vote is for one thing. The vote is not whether or not we're going to raise a DMV fee or raise, slightly raise a gas tax or whatever. The vote is only for allowing us to put the instrument together into a bond and being able to really do what is set out in front of us, and that is to create tens and tens of thousands of jobs and to cor correct these terrible potholes and the roads that are in terrible shape today and build all kinds of new roads and new projects. 500, 500 projects right now are on Tom Smith's de desk. 500 projects from real small to real big. You know, Forevermore, we've been in the coal fields trying to figure out how are we going to build the King Coal Highway or coal field expressways and all that kind of stuff. Now, this doesn't solve it all, but I think that's 27 years in the making. But it really happens, doesn't it? And on top of all that, you know, whether it be in the northern panhandle or the eastern panhandle, whether it be right in the heart of our state, there's real opportunity here and there's real jobs. So I would say today is a happy day, a monumental day, a day that's going to launch us on a pathway of $3 billion of work, $3 billion of work. The most and the most bold that we've ever had before was $500 million, and it was 1,000 years ago. Now, now listen, and let me just say this. If by for whatever reason you may have dissenters out there that would say, no, we don't want to do this, I would say then turn off the lights. We're gone. We're just gone. So I think what we will have is overwhelming support I have yet to have a single person say that they're not behind this wholeheartedly in every way. And so with great, great pleasure, I'm going to sign two instruments today. One basically is an instrument that says, if I could deviate from the roads just a bit, that says our $8 easy pass is going to become a reality. And we're truly going to be able to let mountaineers go for free. You know, mountaineers have always been free. And other than the $8, instead of the hassle of going through and paying tolls nonstop or buying an easy pass and it costing you every time you go through a dollar and 20 cents or 30 cents or whatever it may be, plus the fact you got to pay 80 bucks or whatever it is to get an easy pass anyway, now, we can all have that if we want that. And if we don't ever travel on the turnpike, 
you don't have to buy that. So now we're going to have the instrument in place very, very soon that gives you the opportunity for $8 to travel on the turnpike for free. Now, as we go forward, there very well will be a possibility that what will happen is we'll end up tolling other places within our state. And maybe you're in the northern panhandle today and there's no reason for you to buy that $8 Easy Pass because you don't ever go to, Char uh, to, to Princeton or wherever and we want you to come. I mean, for crying out loud, wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't we love for you to come and visit Princeton and then drive back and eat dinner in Charleston and then go home? But if you decide not to do that, that's okay. But at some point in time, we'll probably have a tolling of somewhere in the northern, eastern panhandle, and maybe in the central part of the state, as well as the turnpike. So, so the net net of the whole thing is, uh, I think it's a great, great, great day. They've got me a thousand pins here that I'm going to sign, and uh, and I guess I'll get started right now. If uh, Brother Casey will show me where to go here, we'll get with it. But I can promise you this, of everything that has been done in this state forevermore, this is the biggest. Now you better listen to me on that. This is the biggest. This is the boldest. This will absolutely save our state. It really, truly will. I mean, you just think of what will happen with this. Thousands and thousands and thousands of jobs. The revenue will be unbelievable from this. Unbelievable. I've said it all along. The revenues will be off the chart. And then you know what will happen? We'll be able to bring people. You'll be able to get to West Virginia and go home if you live elsewhere. This will be an opportunity for people to come back to West Virginia and live in West Virginia. We all know how great it is. We need the outside world to see just how good we really are. This right here, with the stroke of this pen, there is nothing that has happened in my lifetime, I think, to this state that will perpetuate this state like this right here. And for that, I am proud beyond all comprehension. This is our moment right here. And you remember that. If I go out of here today and a truck runs over me today, you remember that this, this, will truly save our state. It is a moment that a lot of us have, been, have, have worked awfully hard on, and nobody could be more proud than me. So here I go. I'm going to just sign the first one. The first one's done. We're done. I'm signing the first one all the whole way. Now I'm going to just, I'll just kind of do this ceremonial thing. It drives me crazy driving, you know, signing one letter at a time or whatever.
proclamation is the reason passed? Yes, it is. Proclamation on the election day, October 7th. Oh. And here I go on the proclamation on October the 7th. We need everybody to vote. I love it when the people vote and the voice of the people's heard. So, and I sign. Okay. I'm going to do this with this. Okay, guys, we're done. Well, I always welcome you to ask anything you'd like to ask, but. Uh, Governor, is there, is there a road you want done first? Oh, I, I can't really say, I, you know, I, 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 I just, I just want one thing, and this is all there is to it. I want us to tell the truth. I want us to quit sandbagging one another, and I want us to absolutely know, I want you to know beyond a doubt that all I want is goodness for the people of West Virginia. You see, I really believe, I believe with all in me how great we really are. And I want greatness for how great we really are. I know, I know that we struggle and we end up 50th and everything coming or going and, and it bothers me. It really hurts me to my soul. And so at the end of the day, it just isn't good enough to just get one thing or another one thing and then go out and spin it and brag on that and everything. I want goodness for our people. Yeah, is, uh, is this a given that this will pass? Uh, only one of the last three bond issues has gone through or is this what it sure takes since the taxes are already in place? For well, let me say this, that, you know, I want the people to make that determination, but but I would say this, that, that I don't know what in the world, I mean, what would go through someone's mind, and I don't want to be derogatory in any way, but to not want roads and to not want jobs and to not want opportunity to this great state would be a, a terrible, terrible mistake. In my mind, it's an absolute given that it's going to go through, but I want our voters to make that decision. Governor, when might we see expansive dirt being overturned and work beginning in earnest, even before the referendum, if that's possible? Well, you'll see some because we've got the, the Garvey bonds, and you'll and and you know and and you see you'll see the impact of the the uh, the wholesale gas increase go into effect immediately and. And you'll see, you'll see action starting immediately. I mean, that's all there is to it. Will this help fix existing roads, potholes, and things like that, or just fixing new construction? I'm sorry, sir? Will, will this help existing, to make existing repairs? Uh, absolutely. Repairs? You know, right now, we, we are spending about $160 million a year, $150 million a year in maintaining our roads. And in all, in all honesty, to really maintain the roads correctly, it's probably going to cost close to $300 million to get them back online. But you, this, this will give us additional bonding will be done that will give us the ability to, to fix and repair the existing roads. If we don't do, just do that and all we do is build new projects, if you've got a road that's, uh, that you don't have a new project coming into your town and everything, well, that doesn't help you. So what we've got to do is fix the, fix the, fix the existing roads as well. But to be clear, the roads program doesn't hinge on the bond issue, right? If it fails, we'll have a, a smaller scale of those plans, correct? If it fails, this state is history. It's gone. That's all there is to it. If it fails, you'll have a minuscule 
and you will not be able to generate the revenue that we've plugged into the budget as the economic gain in revenue, and if that happens, you'll spin back around and have to further cut DHHR and K through 12 and then further cut our universities, you will have a complete meltdown if this doesn't go through. I can't tell you exactly, Phil, but but we're, you know, we'll be working, you know, with all of our accounting people and and uh, and and to be able to to put that out at the very earliest moment that we can put it out. The reason for that's real simple: interest rates are low. You know, the longer we mess around with it this, the higher the probability that interest rates rise. And if interest rates rise, it hurts us. It just hurts us all over the place. With this flat fee, um, will this just be per car or per person who's registered to drive in West Virginia? Well, I don't think it, what do you mean by, by that? I'm sorry. So with the Mountaineer drive free, will it be, um, you know, for, for just one car that's registered or will it be for individuals? Well, I think you'll have an easy pass and you can just treat the easy pass like you have in the past. Now, I don't know exactly, you know, the particulars about that and everything, but I think, I think basically what it is, is an easy pass just like you've had in the past. Talking about this being a wholesale gas tax increase made by the wholesalers, but realistically, is this likely to get passed down to the consumer at the pump? Realistically, it, it kind of goes back to the level of where our wholesale gas price was, the index price was before. We just changed it back to that. But it it, it is a three and a half, I think it's three and a half cents or about that and everything. But uh, I don't know how in the world we could trade, even if it was a straight pass on. And you know, and oil prices have dropped and everything. And so, so I mean, you could see a three and a half change in the gas, in the gas price with any fluctuation in oil prices, and then we see it every day. So I think it's, very, it's, it's, almost, it's almost minuscule beyond belief for the benefit that we're gonna get out of it. Okay. Good job, Grant. <laughs>